All right, so what's going on, Yelani? We got another one, 350. This one reads, water, which is inviscid and incompressible, flows steadily with a speed of 10 feet per second from the large tank. Determine the depth H of the layer of the light liquid that covers the water in the tank. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for this one, we gotta go ahead, same thing, right, Bernoulli equation. So uh, we gotta find this height ultimately, but we can't do that without knowing the pressure at this point. Why? Because in this scenario, right, we could do this point. You remember from manometers, um, you have this point to go down a distance and you equal another point. So that's kind of what we have to do, but we can't do that without knowing the pressure here. And you might think, well, it's zero, right? But um, that's not really the case here because you have this liquid up top. So if there was no liquid, yeah, this would be zero. This pressure right here is zero. So that means we know this pressure here is zero. So let me go ahead and label, label this point zero, this point one, and we're gonna do Bernoulli equation from one to two. So we got that right there. So let's go ahead, do the knowns. So we're using water, density of water, it is in feet. And the reason I wanted to do this example was because we have feet and we're so used to using density of water at 62.4, but this case we have to use the slug version. You'll see why. So density of water is 1.94 slugs per feet cubed. So that's the density of water. The density of water is also we won't need this number, but it's also 62.4 pound mass per feet cubed. So if you divide this by this, you'll get 32.2, which is a uh, gravity. So what that means is one pound mass is equal to 32.2 um, uh, of these pretty much, if that makes sense. So that's the reason it changes. Um, you'll also know the specific weight of water is the same digit, 62.4, but this time it's a pound force per feet cubed. Now, honestly, it's pretty annoying. Um, I don't know why they did it this way, right? But that's just pretty much what it is. So get used to it. Um, we also have the gamma of this fluid right here. So let's go ahead and put that one. That is 50 pounds per feet cubed and we should be good everything's in feet everything's in feet here pounds we're all good same units we could go ahead and start with Bernoulli so let's do Bernoulli and again you take Bernoulli where you know the most um knowns if that makes sense so this is a free jet at the very exit of a free jet at this point right here the pressure zero because it's atmospheric and then there's a velocity in this case they give it to us so cool we got 10 we have pressure we have velocity and we have a height we could reference some height we're still not there yet but just keep that in mind at this point we don't know the pressure but we need it we know velocity zero and we know a height we could always reference it so we could take it from here to here, there's a streamline going all the way in like that. So let's go ahead and do that, right? P1 plus one half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 equals P2 plus one half rho V2 squared plus rho G H2. All right, so let's go ahead and do the streamline, uh, the datum, I'm sorry, here. Again, you could choose it wherever. You could choose it from here, right? Um, the reason I chose it here was because one of this height's gonna be zero. So if I do it here, I'm gonna have two heights and I don't, I don't wanna deal with too many heights. So let's just stick with one. Um, so cool, we know pressure one is equal to, we're looking for it, so question mark. Pressure two is zero. It's a free jet, remember. Exit of a free jet. Uh, V1 is equal to zero, right? V2 
is equal to 10 feet per second. I'm not going to write the units, but make sure it's not an inch per second. Sometimes they try to trick you, but cool. H1 is equal to zero, right? This is our reference. So this point is right on the reference line, the datum line. And H2. H2 is one foot away from the reference line. So this is five feet. This is four feet. That means this right here is one foot. So H2, and it's positive. It's above the reference, okay? Make sure this could be a negative or positive. You got to be careful. So we got all that. Um, so that means P1, right? Bernoulli continuing. P1, V1 is zero, H1 is zero. So those canceled out. P2 is zero. And V2, there's a number. H2, there's a number. Cool. So we got these two terms. V2 squared plus rho G H2. Let's start plugging in some numbers. So P1 is equal to 1 half. Now, density, again, we don't use the 62.4 because this is also density, right? This one right here, the one I told you. That's also a density, but that's a pound mass. You could only use this number when you got gravity involved. So we could use that number here, but uh, not here, if that makes sense. Um, so be careful. In this case, you cannot use 62.4 because we just want density alone. If it makes it any easier, this is the number you have to remember, and this is the number you have to remember. And this number times gravity will give you this number. If that makes it easier. I'm not sure how you want to remember it, but just be careful. And I'll show you right now. It should make sense at the very end, but uh, you'll see. So V2... That's 10 squared, right? Plugging in numbers plus now density. Again, I could use a 1.94 and then plug in gravity, 32.2. Or I could just use the gamma of water. That is 62.4. Because these two are gamma, okay? Times height. And that's just one. Right? So you do the math here. P1 will be 159.4. Uh, this is not Newtons per meter cube. This is PSI. Pound per... Oh, actually, no. It's pound per feet squared. It's not PSI. If you want to do PSI, you would have to... If you have pound per feet squared and then one foot and then 144 inch squared right you would have to divide this number by 144 to get psi but this is 159.4 pound per feet squared not inch squared okay um what else what else so now that we have this pressure we could use manometers to find pretty much uh, this height. So step three, final step, let's use manometers. Oh, we got, so we start at this point, add or subtract whatever you gotta do to get to this point, right? So it's start at pressure zero, we're going down, so we're adding gamma of height is equal to our destination p1 so we know p1 we know p0 right this is atmospheric that's pressure zero gamma they gave it to us cool we can find height so that means p1 is equal to gamma times height of gamma the fluid right not water um pressure one is 159.4 pound per feet squared and then this is 50 pound per feet cubed multiplied by a height if you do the math you should get height is equal to oh, 
3.188 feet. Cool. So that's your answer right there. Again, the main thing on this problem, um, make sure you're using the right density because that could really mess you up. But if you know how to do that, um, and even on exams, just FYI, my professor was cool. He didn't give any, uh, any feet or inches. He always gave newtons, meters, the SI units. So hopefully you get the same amount of luck. Those are easier, but good luck.